The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I am Paxson Tandor Daniel, Computer Science Teacher. Before I move into our lesson for the session, we are going to start with the correction of the assignment we had in the previous lesson. An enterprise in your town employs only disabled people. You were asked to analyze the system of a unit working with only their dog. Which technique are you going to use to carry out requirement detection? Explain why the other techniques may not be appropriate. So the best techniques which we are going to use in this situation to carry out requirement detection will be observation and documentation. That is, you observe how the, you observe how the workers in the system, the workers in that unit work, you take down facts, and also you can read through the documentation of how that unit was designed and how the unit is working. The next final question was explain why the other techniques may not be appropriate. The other techniques which we are, we are to look at here is interviews. We said interviews involve one-on-one -on -one interaction with the users of the system. And if in this situation you are to, you are to question or in, you are to interact one-on-one -on -one verbally with the users of that unit. And we said unit working with only the dog. It means the people working in this unit are dog. They can't talk, so it will be difficult for you to interview them properly, except you understand sign, sign language which we are used to communicate with them. So if you don't understand sign language, then the technique of interview is very inappropriate for you to use because you might get wrong facts and wrong data. So it's better you use observation and you read documentation to understand how the, how the unit works. The next question is, as a system analyst, you are asked to carry out your fact-finding activities using the document of the enterprise. Give one advantage and one disadvantage of the documentation method. Advantage. One advantage and one disadvantage of documentation. Advantage. First advantage that little or no ambiguity since written language is general. Generally more formal and clearer than spoken language. Little or no ambiguity since written language is more is generally more formal and clearer than spoken language. That is what is being written down is clearer and formal than what is spoken. You might talk without reasoning or thinking properly before talking, but when it comes to writing down stuff, you might have you, you must have thought of it. You might have you must have thought of it. And make sure that what you want to write is clear and does not create a conflict with another requirement. So there's little or no ambiguity, that like little or no confusion, since what has to be written is generally more formal and clearer than spoken language. 
Disadvantage. It may be tedious to read documentation. Documentations about systems normally range from tens of pages to thousands of pages. So we have a documentation that has, let's say, hundreds of pages. It's going to be tedious to go through all these 500, to go through all these hundreds of pages just to understand how their system works. So documentation is tedious to read if the number of pages involved in the document is much. Our lesson for this session is design, development, and testing phase of the software development life cycle. Our last lesson was on analysis. This lesson is on design, development, and testing of the system development life cycle. A plan for the session goes like we have objectives, previous knowledge, PLF application of design, development, and testing phase of the system development life cycle, presentation of concept, exercises, and lastly, assignment. So we have observation, previous knowledge, PLF application, presentation of concept, exercises, assignment. Objectives. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain, explain the objective of the design phase, explain the various types of system testing, state the benefit of testing a system before it is put into use. So at the end of the lesson, you should be able to explain the objectives of the design phase, explain the various types of system testing, state the benefits of testing system before it is put into use. Previous knowledge, notions on system analysis, notions on system development life cycle model. So expected to have notions on system analysis, notions on system development life cycle models. Before we get into the lesson, let's take a look at a real-life application, that is a real-life scenario where we can apply the design, development, and testing phase of a system development life cycle in our day-to-day -day activities. The management of the school has decided to implement an information system in order to facilitate the operations of its administration. The management of a school has decided to implement an information system in order to facilitate the operation of its, um, of its administration, staffs, and parents. This system will enable the storing of information and computation of report cards so that parents can access the following student performance from their homes. It means the school wants to create an information system which will allow parents, staff, and the administration to operate easily. I will also help parents to get access to student reports and performance from their homes. After carrying out a feasibility study and analysis of the project, it was decided that the project is worth pursuing. You have been asked, you have been tasked by the management to come out with a design that will be designed by the development team to build their project. And also to explain some of the ways the system will be tested after development. It means you have been tasked to design a system which has to be developed by the development team, which has to be, development, which has to be built by the development team, as well as explain method of testing after development. Design phase of the system development life cycle. What is the design phase of the system development life cycle? This is a process of defining the, archi the architecture, product, architecture, product design, modules, interface, and data for a system to satisfy specified 
requirement. This is a process of defining the architecture, product design, modules, interface, and data for a system to satisfy specified requirements. So before building, before developing the system, we need to design all the components of the system. So the designing of the component of that system before development is what comes in the design phase. So here we define the architecture, we design we define the architecture, we define the product design, how the product is going to look, the different modules that will make up the system, the interface, that's what the user of the system are going to see, the, and data for the system. All this is supposed to satisfy the specified requirement. Objectives of the design phase. What is the objective of the design phase? Transformation of all requirements into detailed specification covering all aspects of the system. So the first objective of the design phase is to transform all requirements into detailed specifications covering all aspects of the system. So we have to transform the requirement into detailed specification which development can easily, which the development team can easily build for. Assessment and planning for security risks. So we have we have the requirement. We have to assess and plan from the requirement to see where there is a security risk so the security risk can be tackled. Approval to progress into development phase. We can only move the, into the development phase when the design phase is complete. Because the development phase, the development team is going to build the system from what the design team has sent to them. So the, the design phase involves transforming requirements into detailed specification which covers all basic modules and components of the system that is to be built. Types of system design. We have four types of system design. We have logical design, physical design, architectural design, and detailed design. Logical design, physical design, architectural design, and detailed design. Logical design. What is logical design? Logical design pertains to an abstract representation of the data flow, input, and output of the system. Logical design pertains to the abstract representation. That is, we are trying to bring out the logic of how the system will function. That is, it includes the flow of data, how data is going to flow within the system, input and output of the system. But here we are looking at the abstract, we are looking at abstraction, that is the logic, logic behind the functioning of the system. Physical design. Physical design relates to the actual input and output processes of the system. Physical design relates to the actual input and output processes of the system. It focuses on how data is entered into the system, verified, processed, and displayed as output. Physical design is interested in how data is being entered into the system and how that data is being processed before it is being sent out as output. So it is involved in collecting data, processing that data, processing data, and sending out the processed data, which is information, as output. Architectural design. Architectural design. This is a high-level design that focuses on the design of system architecture. Architectural design focuses on the design of the system architecture. Detailed design. It's a process of refining and expanding the software architecture of a system to the extent that the design is sufficiently complete to be implemented. 
So detailed design is making sure that everything is in place for, develop, for development. So we define and we expand the whole architecture of the system to the extent that the design is sufficiently complete to be implemented. It means with detailed design, we we'll make sure that all the modules, the components are in place for the system to be implemented. I mean, after the system design phase, we go directly into development. After system design, we move into development. Now we're looking at the development phase of the system development life cycle. What is the development phase of the system development life cycle? What is the purpose of the development phase of the system development life cycle? This is a process of building the system according to the earlier design document and outline specification. This is the process of building their system according to the earlier design document and outline specification. So after the design phase is complete, the design which was approved in the design phase is being sent to the development team in the development phase for them to build their System. The system is built according to the design document and specifications from the design phase. Objectives of the development phase. The main objective of the development phase is to build the system. The main objectives of the development phase is to build the system. It means the system is being created in the development phase. Testing and integrating the unit into larger components. So the development phase includes objectives, include testing and integrating the unit into larger components. It means now in the development phase, we test, we are supposed to test and integrate or the separate unit and component to form a large component, which is the entire system. Preparing the technical environment for the system. The, the development phase is meant to prepare the technical environment for the system. Approval to progress to the test phase. We can only move the test phase of the system you can know, the test phase of the development process if the development phase is complete. Activities in the development phase. The activities involved in the development phase include deciding on coding conventions. So first we have to decide on coding conventions. Next, building the system. So before we go into build the system, we need to decide on coding convention. Which program language are we going to use? What ID are you going to use? After deciding on all that, we go into actually building the system. After building the system and the build, after building the system and what has been built is approved, we can move into the testing phase. Testing. This is an investigation con conducted to check whether a system matches expected requirement. Testing is simply an investigation conducted to check whether a system matches expected requirement. So we have to check if what the system, what we have to check if the system that has been built matches the requirement that was stated in the analysis and the design fields. So it tests if the system works properly based on the based on the requirement that were stated in the analysis and the design fields. Benefit of testing fields. Benefit of the testing fields. Identification of bugs and defect. Identification of bug and defect. Bugs and defect are simply are simply things that will make the system not to function as expected. 
Bugs and defects are simply things that will make the system not function as expected. So, by testing, we can identify bugs and defects which can be corrected. Improves product quality. Improves product quality. So after testing, the product quality can be improved by noting functionalities that don't function properly or requirements that were not met and those requirements can be improved on. Customer satisfaction. After testing the system, the customer can decide if he or she or they are satisfied with the system or not. But after testing, most customers are likely to be satisfied with what has been done. We are going to look at types of testing in software development, in system development life cycle. Types of testing in system development life cycle. We have four types of testing. Unit testing, integration testing, system testing, and lastly, user acceptance testing. So we have the unit testing, integration testing, system testing, and lastly, the user acceptance testing. Unit testing, what is it all about? It is performed on smaller components of the system, which tester can test as a single unit. It is performed on smaller components of the system, which the tester can test as a single unit. So, we use the test as earlier said, the design, design phase includes designing modules and components which makes up the entire system. So we unit testing each of those modules and components are tested separately before they are combined to form a larger system. So with unit testing, we test all the separate modules and components that makes up the system separately as a single unit. Integration testing, it combines different system modules as at once and tests these modules collectively. Unit testing tests the modules separately and independently, while integration testing now combines the modules together as a single unit and tests them collectively. System testing. This is a procedure where collective system is integrated. This is a, this is a procedure where collective system in integrated testing are combined further into a single integrated system and the whole is tested. So with, with integrated testing, with integrated testing, we group similar modules as a single unit before testing them. So we group similar unit modules and all components as a single unit and we test them collectively. While with system testing now, we group all the components that form the system and we test them as a single unit. So integration after Test, after unit testing, we wish we test each module separately. Integration testing, we combine, we combine a related a module and component into a single unit before testing them. Now with system testing, we combine all the unit that we got in from the integration testing into one and we test the system completely. So it means system testing is the last phase of testing the component. Then we have user acceptance testing. User acceptance testing is just for the user to test and accept if the system meets their requirement. So after the development team, after the testing team of the development, after the testing team has tested the system, 
using the unit testing, integration testing phase, and the system testing, they, they must pass that system to the customer for the customer to approve that the system meets their requirement. To better understand all what we have seen, we are going to look at some, we are going to look at some tabs which we have to answer. So we have tick there, let's start of the correct answer. The first question is, after, after the development of an information system, after the development of an information system, different parts of the system were combined and tested together. This is a type, this type of testing is known as after the development of an information system, different parts of the system were combined and tested together. This type of testing is known as A, system testing, B, unit testing, C, integration testing, D, acceptance testing. The correct answer is integration testing. Because we group different parts of the system and we test them together. Dash is not an objective, objective of the design phase. To ask you which is an objective of the design phase. Approved for testing, assessment and planning for security risks, approval to progress to the development phase, none of the above. The correct answer is approved for testing. Approval of testing comes after the development phase, then after the design phase. After the design phase, we move the development phase. So after developing, then we approve for testing. During the design phase of the system, the designer determines all the specification of each module and the entire system to be developed at the next stage. Which type of design was performed by the designer. During the design phase of the system, the designer determined all the specification of each module and the entire system to be developed in the next stage. Which type of design was performed by the designers? A. Architectural design B. Physical design C. Logical design D. Detailed design The correct answer is Detailed design. The next question is, which stage of the system life cycle focuses on making sure the system is accepted by the user? Which phase of the system development life cycle focuses on making sure that the system is accepted by the user? A. Plan phase B. Development phase C. Design phase D. Testing phase The correct answer is Testing phase. So the testing is making sure that the system matches all specified requirements. Step the next exercise is step and explain any integrity benefit of system testing. Next question is what is the difference between the design and the development phase in a system development life cycle? To give a benefit of system testing include identification of bug and defect, improvement of product quality, customer satisfaction. Difference between design and development phase. Design phase is the process of defining the architecture, product design, modules, interface, and data for a system to satisfy specified requirement. Whereas development is the process of building the system. So, for, with designing, we state what is expected from the system, while with development, we actually build what is expected from the system. So, we build the actual system in the development phase. To better understand all what we have seen, we have some tasks we ought to do. The first task is state and explain any two types of system testing. We have seen four types of system testing. You are supposed to state and explain two types of system testing. What do you understand by the design phase of a of the system development life cycle? What do you understand by the design phase of 
that system development life cycle. The next question, which is the give two give two objectives of that development phase of that system development life cycle. Give two objectives of the development phase of that system development life cycle. In order for this lesson to be prepared, the following resources were used. Our next lesson will be on implementation, the implementation phase of that system development life cycle. Una tege si ma tege yop, una tege minga ma tege nyum, una tege ma jang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndong, esa kina bia dinki do, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, tam tam ma mote tam zabike, 